Hey everybody, Lakia Robinson here. Thank you so much for being on this webinar today. We're going to talk about a really fun topic, well at least I think so, social media. Um, we're gonna talk about what it, what it is, um, what our primary focus is when it comes to social media because some people have it all mixed up. Um, we're gonna also talk about some things that you should be focusing on rather not focusing on. I you know, consult with clients all the time and they are really focused on the wrong thing. So I want you guys to be focused on the right thing. So this is what this webinar is all about today. So let's go ahead and hop right into it by asking the question, um, what is social media? And really, when we think about media in itself, it's an instrument on communication, like a newspaper or a radio. So essentially social media would be a social instrument of communication. And then you wanna ask yourself, why do I need to use it? As you look at this, um, this slide right here, you'll see at the top where it says populating the top of the sales funnel through social media. So here we have all of these um, social media platforms. We have other, which could be just Snapchat or whatever other platform you like to use. Then we have YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and some other things over there as well. And ultimately what we wanna do is get these people who are out here to funnel down into our blog or our website which we can then narrow it down to some leads and then ultimately sales. And we can look at our, our ROI, which is our return on investment. But up here, as you can see, it's just a sea of people. But what, who we really care about are the people who are going to return into leads or if they come to our blog or our website, they will be a great evangelist for our blog, blog or website. So now let's look at... Um, some social media tactical plans. Now, what that means is you have to have a plan in social media. A lot of times people just want to jump into social media and, and please every single person. They don't have a plan, they're just out there doing things. But in reality, if you're gonna be on social media, you have to have a plan. That's the first thing I tell people, you have to have a plan. So we're gonna focus on some key um, components of that plan right now. All right, so the first thing I want you guys to remember is you need to know your target demographic. There are different audiences on each social media platform. For instance, you look at Facebook or Twitter or Instagram, Google+, YouTube, LinkedIn. There are people on those platforms that have a specific interest and um, they're in a specific category. Like LinkedIn, if you are more of a business to business um, person, then that probably will be the platform that you would shoot for. Um, they have a lot of professionals, but if you look at it, um, each platform has something different that they add a unique flair or um, demographic. So you have to know who your target demographic is. And then you need to focus on that for your business. I find that so many people jump in and they want to be on every single platform. Well, I believe that your target demographic is somewhere and maybe you need to focus on two um, and then grow from there where since you know you have different demographics on each platform, then you can cater your message to those platforms. So if it's a younger crowd, then you may wanna tweak your message and, and submit it for a younger cr crowd, maybe on Twitter. But initially starting off, you might want to focus on your target demographic. And Facebook, I think, is a good starting point. Uh, and then Pinterest is a really good starting point as well. And LinkedIn is becoming one of my favorites, but we're going to talk about that later. Um, and the next component you want to focus on is setting up a social media posting cadence. So what is that? What I mean by a cadence is the frequency of post. You need to determine when your supporters are most active. Are they on your page morning, midday, evening, weekends, weekday, wherever, whenever they're coming on there, you should be there ready um, to give them the content that they, they want. And then from there, um, then you grow and build upon that platform. So let's look at the next component. The next component I want you guys to remember is determining your social media voice. Are you funny? Is it playful? Is it educational, informative, serious, witty? And then develop some content towards that. 
so that people know what they're gonna get when they come to your page. So whatever your social media voice is, I would say to use it and stick with it and be consistent across the board um, so that whenever your audience comes to you, they know exactly who they're going to get. And I mean, occasionally you can throw in some funny things or playful things or whatever your um, your primary voice is going to be. You can take the opposite opposite of it sometimes and throw it in there and make it um, different and giving them, you know, variety, but don't. But you don't want to be inconsistent with one day you're here, another day you're there. You do want to keep an equal balance at times. The next component that you need to focus on when it comes to your tactical plan is determining your um, return on investment. So this is essentially analyzing and testing your metrics. So I want you guys to think, what metrics will I need to, to look at in order to determine um, my success or if I've met my goals? And simply, that can be um, your reach, how many fans, followers, members, subscribers, how much traffic that you're getting um, on your website, um, your leads, how many are actually, as we sh I showed you in that um, video or that photo earlier, how many are coming down that funnel and turning into leads and eventually like paying customers. And so that conversion rate is going to be important as well. Are they purchasing things? And then we can look at, you know, online purchases, filling out contact forms, um, link clicks, um, newsletter signups, PDF downloads, all of those things are really important to your plan and that you should be writing out, um, before jumping into your social media platforms. This is a big one right here. Um, care for and nurturing your social media. I want to really emphasize this because some people think, oh, if I just put a post up or a, a status up one day on Facebook and then I come back three days later, that's enough. You know, I'm giving them content. Well, it's not really true. You want to nurture your social media. You cannot set it and forget it. You cannot do that. This I know we, in a perfect world, we can automate our businesses and it will be super successful. But here, you cannot. The whole purpose of social media, going back to the definition, we want to engage with our audience. We want to, as you see these fingers that are up there, chat we want to talk we want to make friends we want to like stuff we want to network discuss share what they're doing as well and blog you know those are some of the components that we cannot forget you know social media is social for a reason <laughs> otherwise we just call it media right please guys be social all right that's the most important thing that i want to share with you um but also remember that it's okay, and I had somebody else um, share with me that they wanted to um, only use their content whenever they put posted things. I would not recommend that. Um, people will share if you are willing to share. So if you're sharing other people's content, they're more likely going to share yours. You don't want to look like, oh, it's all about me. It's all about me. Go ahead and repin something else or post um, something else or share it that has to deal with somebody else, you know, giving your opinion or being thoughtful and insightful about their content. But don't just think it's all about you. Interact with those key players as well as your um, fans. Another reason why we're on social media is because we want to make some money, of course, realistically. So what we have to do is generate some traffic. So social media marketing is super cool and if you're dedicated to it and like I said in the last slide right here and you nurture it and care for it um, correctly, then you're going to be able to generate some money and some traffic. And here are some um, different platforms that actually have ways that you can generate that traffic so it doesn't have to naturally be organic meaning people just find you naturally but you can actually um take out some ads like facebook you can do ads twitter you do promoted posts and then you can also pay um, for hashtags as well to be trending and stuff we have not done that here yet um but that's a possibility for you if you want to look into that. Pinterest, you can pin things back to your blog and have affiliate links um, that are connected. And then, which is really cool, and I'm gonna do a webinar in the days ahead, but there's um, different 
rich pins that they call them where you can put your videos in there you can put your articles and then it gives you instead of it looking like a regular pin it will be a pin that is um, has a little bit extra on there where people know it's an article and it came from your blog specifically with your website address on there so that's going to be huge um, for you guys if you want to use that for Pinterest also um, which it just rolled out maybe like last week, um, or actually hasn't rolled out yet, but the concept and what they're gonna be doing uh, just came out. And the buy it button. Pinterest is so cool that they decided to, when you're looking at your pins, you can actually, um, they have a buy it button right next to the pin it button. So if somebody comes to um, comes across your pin and they're like, oh, I want this, I have to have it now, they don't, just go straight to your website, but they can buy it at that moment. And so now Instagram, they have sponsored ads and I'm not sure, and I don't believe it's open to the public yet, but they're testing some bigger names and then eventually you will be able to do some sponsored ads on Instagram. So that's one of the platforms that is constantly evolving. So maybe next week or a month from now, I'm like, hey, you can put out an ad. So here are some tips and tools to get you going. Um, first of all, create some content and then rotate it every 30 days. You do not have to sit there and reinvent the wheel like every single day. Have some, if you have content from a year ago, take what you did in January of last year and use it now. Like just keep rotating it constantly, which I'm pretty sure you guys are repurposing your content. If you're not, please do it. Tom has an article about repurposing your content, so make sure you get it if you don't have it. Um, mix up your posts. Make sure you're doing videos and pictures and regular text. So um, video is the future and it will go viral if it's a good concept. So make sure that you're using those videos and giving people some great pictures. And um, one thing that I want you to remember also is call to action put some call to actions in your posts for instance you want them to be engaged right so ask them questions like my page share my page leave a comment tell them to do these things that's what you want um, that's what it's all about social and getting other people into the conversation so I'm asking you I'm telling you put call to actions in your posts another tip and tool to get you going is to of course have great content no matter who you are you have to have content that will bring your readers back and like we talked about in the funnel we want them to come to our you know our blog um, so you have to have that good content on your social media platforms that give them a taste of what it's over on your blog. Another thing you um, should realize is that the trust building offer, you have to build up trust with your audience. You have to be consistent and trustworthy. So if you are someone who is giving out advice and information, make sure that it's valid. Um, we do this thing in education where, you know, you have to have valid, incredible resources. So you are going to be that person for them. Um, just think, you don't want to go to a website where they're reporting false information. You want to go to a website or a platform where you can trust their words. So make sure that everything you put out is building um, trust with your audience. Also, I want to um, kind of talk, touch on this subject a little bit because sometimes we get a little bit afraid to use um, management tools. For instance, um, you may want to look at um, Hootsuite and Hootsuite what it does is it schedules out your post. So instead of being at your computer all day every day, why don't you choose one day where you're able to just um, schedule out some posts. Like we talked about earlier, having that content and repurposing it taking 30 days and um, using it over again. So that's a tip and a trick that you can use is to use some social media platform or social media management tools, such as Hootsuite, there is IFPP or IFTT. Um, there's a range of them that you guys could actually use. So if you go and do a Google search, social media management tools, you'll be able to find some of those. 
All right, so now let's talk about what you should actually be focusing on because there are those who are just beginning on their social media platforms and then there's those who are already doing some things. So I wanna talk about those who are on Facebook or, and you can actually apply this to other um, platforms as well, but we're gonna focus on Facebook right now just to give you an idea because most people do start with Facebook as their first platform. So if you already have a page and you're trying to maintain everything, then you should really be focusing on likes. And actually, let me break these down for you because when you're on Facebook, you can either get likes, you can have people engage with your post. So that's actually you putting out a post and people commenting, liking, sharing, and all those great things and conversions, people who are, who are actually opting into your website. So we have these three components. And the first one is just getting people to actually, you know, like like your page. So 20% of your time should be focused on building likes if you are already established. So that's, you maybe have like 500 people or even 100 people, you aren't at the bottom. Now, if you are just starting, you may wanna focus on likes 30% because you wanna at least get the traction going. And once you get to a certain number that you're comfortable with, then you can go ahead and focus on um, moving that down to 20% of your time. There's no magic formula to this at all. I'm just throwing out these percentages. I read this somewhere and I thought that it was a good formula for people who are really focusing on their platforms. So don't get stuck with this, but um, it just gives you a good range of what you should do. Now, either way, um, when it comes to engagement, if you are just building your page or you already have a page that is established, 50% of your time should be focused on this. So we have to remember that whenever it comes to engagement, that's half of our time. And, you know, when I gave this presentation, um, one of the mentees asked, I said, hey, you know, should I be responding to every single person? And I, you know, told them, you don't really have to respond to every single person. You can choose, pick and choose people who have great um, questions and respond to them. Um, people know that you're busy. People understand that, you know, you're not gonna live on social media, but if you find those comments that are really worth answering, I would say to go and spend some time on that. You do not have to sit there and answer every single one. But I will say, if you have, about 10 people that are interacting or five to 10 people, what's the harm in actually responding to each person? Because you really don't have a lot. I'm saying if you get like hundreds and thousands of um, people responding to you, then I would, you know, of course, pick and choose. But if you have a very small page, then there, I would definitely engage with each person. Um, but it's all up to your time as well. But you know, if you have like five people saying things, I wouldn't just say, oh, I'm going to pick the best one. Even if you just like the comment to say, I was, I seen what you said, um, I'm acknowledging it and then keep moving. That's fine as well. Okay. So conversion. So this is having people opt into your site. Now, if you are building your page, um, pretty much focus on 20% of that. You know, you're really focusing, you're taking a lot of your energy and putting it on building the likes of your page. But if you are already have, you know, a, a good substantial amount of followers, then I will focus on 30%, getting them off of social media onto um, your email list. So that's just pretty much percentages that I think will be useful for you guys. And remember, this is not a formula that's set, set in stone at all. So please remember that. So now I want to talk about mistakes because a lot of times we get so focused on, we get discouraged when it comes to social media because there's some things that we're looking at that we really shouldn't be focusing on. Um, so let's talk about those. Um, number, the, I'm going to go in backwards. So the number two um, mistake that I think people have when it comes to social media, and I see it all the time, is not having a plan. People get excited about being on the platform and then when it's not working, they get frustrated and then eventually they'll get discouraged and bitter at times because their list isn't growing um, quickly, they aren't patient enough, 
Um, they're not doing the work enough. And then at the end of the day, it's okay. Why my, why is my page moving? Why isn't it doing anything? I'm, I have one follower and it hasn't even increased, um, over a month worth of time. And I'm just exaggerating, but you don't have a plan. Um, I have a social media tactical form that I would like to give you. So if you are interested, please, um, definitely send an email or we can have it available for you over at the site. That's what we will do, um, of the plan. And you should follow this because it gives you different metrics and I'm actually going to show that to you, but it gives you metrics and shows you what you should be doing and, um, how you should measure what you're actually doing each time that you're posting or putting something up and have a, just have a plan have a solid plan if you started your business I'm pretty sure you have a business you had a business plan or if you started your book you had an outline where you were going so that when you got in the middle of it you didn't necessarily get frustrated so social media is the same thing you're going to possibly run into road blocks and barriers and you don't want to get frustrated and then get discouraged to the point where you don't even post anything and you just fail to engage and keep building your page. So we don't want to get into that rut. Another thing that I've seen is vanity social metrics. And I'm going to spend a little time on this because I get so many mentees that focus on vanity social metrics. Now that is an excessive pride in or admiration of one's own appearance or achievements. It's the ones most people trot out are things like Twitter followers, Facebook likes, page views, registered users, and downloads. Now, I have seen, I've gone to people's Facebook pages and they've had like 150,000 people and 10 people have actually engaged and interacted with them. To me, as a business person or somebody is like, okay, I want to see if I it's worth actually taking out a Facebook ad and targeting them, you know, if it, is it worth it? Because if they're not interacting with your page, they're for sure not going to interact with mine when I'm taking out my Facebook ad. And I think it, people think get excited because it looks cool to have a lot of followers. And don't get me wrong. Um, and I'm going to sound maybe like I'm talking out the side of my neck right now um, when it comes to the vanity metrics, but there is a time and a place for everything. Sometimes you do have to have those Facebook likes for people to say, okay, this is a credible source and you know other people are listening for the social proof. You have to have that. Um, but at the end of the day, you don't, I am not going to be impressed when you have 150,000 followers and 10 people are commenting and 10 people are engaging. That means you must have bought those likes from somewhere, you know? And so I want you to avoid getting down on yourself when you're looking at your followers because you can have 150 people and 80 of those people are responding and interacting. That is success. That is true success. If you can get your people to engage. So don't get caught up with, oh, I have 100,000 Twitter followers or 20,000 Facebook likes. That really doesn't matter. So I want you guys to pay close attention when you are measuring your success. We're looking for, as we talked about earlier, our um, return on investment. Who is actually converting and buying? Um, because our goal is not to really keep them on social media, it's to bring them over to our website. So focus on those things and you will be very successful when it comes to this social media game. Now, I want to go ahead and show you, because um, I talked about the social media tactical plan, I want to show you that really quickly. Okay, so look at some of these action items that you can choose from. So first, I'm, I did everything like step by step so you can look at it. So first, what you need to do is choose a social media site. So what, of course, is your target demographic, what you would like to reach, and then you would go ahead and choose the site. Then you ask yourself, will I blog? And then you can choose one from there. Um, setting up social media cadence. Um, what will be the frequency of your posts? So these are all the criteria we talked about in the presentation. So this is just um, an example or what's actually inside the plan. So let's scroll on down. And then I broke everything down 
um, by platform. So as you can see on Facebook up here, um, you can put how many times you'll post a day, weekly, monthly. So this is really good too for um, if you have a team of people, if you don't necessarily do it yourself, you can have a team of people and remind them of your objective. So brand awareness and engagement, lead generation or customer acquisition so that you don't get too stuck when you come to, when you go over to your um to actually post things and when you get there it's like okay this is my objective every single time of me posting i want to engage people i want to actually get them to know about the upcoming events so down here would be your action items so um some of the things you might be able you should do um to achieve your objective and that's setting up sponsored posts and ads and setting up facebook tabs that sync to your marketing automation platform and then you can look at some of the key metrics so the number of posts per, per day and i'm saying i put this on here like the x because i want you to go in there and fill everything out and be specific when it comes to what you want um your how many people you want to follow your page a day or a week or a month um the likes um, the shares all of these things i've incorporated in here so you won't forget anything um like i said it's just better to have a plan and come on down here to Twitter. Twitter is set up a little differently. Um, and it's pretty much the same when it comes to, to the objectives with the um, exception of a few things like build reputation or some of those. Um, but when it comes to the action items, a little different. They have Twitter lead generation cards, you know, promoted tweets and pinned tweets. Um, and I also didn't, I need to put that in there, but maybe registering your hashtag. We did a webinar on registering that. So you will definitely need to um, check that out if you are interested in registering your hashtag to bring it a part, of, to make it a part of your brand. Um, and then of course, there's some key metrics that may be a little different. Hashtag usage, number of lists, um, referring traffic favorited tweets and all those great things and i came on down here and did some things with pinterest pinterest as we know is completely different and i have to go in here and change some things because pinterest now has a buy it button so um it's not actually released to the public yet but it will be i'm not sure when but which is pretty cool like i said you can go in there you can click buy and purchase it right off the site um but you can do promoted pins. You can um, do a whole bunch of great things. Purchases and referring traffic, key metrics, and um, your action items. Creating boards, leveraging both content and company culture. You can actually pin for other boards and be a part of their organization. So those are you know different ways you can get yourself out there. Google Plus, we don't really work with Google Plus, but there are some people who do. And if you do, um, this is most certainly on the sheet, so you can fill these out and do some um, of the metrics and the action items and the objectives. Instagram, I'm actually gonna be doing a webinar on Instagram, so um, be sure to look out for that. I'm gonna talk about um, just hashtags and what you should be doing when it comes to Instagram. Some of the you know things you can really overlook on the platform but um, the objectives are pretty much the same you can showcase your products um, company culture marketing events all those amazing things and then your action items determine ownership of photo sites and pretty much with instagram you know it's an opportunity for you to really brand your company and push it out there it's not that difficult um, it's just really knowing the hashtags and and the feature items so please stay tuned for that um, webinar and then of course the key metrics so how many shares you get how many people view your photos um, and then ultimately we want them to come back to our website so overall that is the social media tactical plan that you should really be focusing on when it comes to your your social media you always want to have a plan um, if it's for two different companies each company should have a plan on how you're going to move forward with your social media and it's just so helpful to have this and at the end of the day when you get discouraged or frustrated and say why am i doing this you can go back to this platform and say okay here is my objective and this is what i'm supposed to be doing hope you guys enjoying the webinar and if you have any questions we're going to answer them right now